Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. Azure Energy Southern Arizona, it's now time for the highly acclaimed, much anticipated Friday football fever. Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Cala. And I'm Ari Alexander. Paul, time has flown by pretty fast, just like that last regular season week of Friday football fever. South Point High, the only team in our area undefeated this year. That's right. And of course, a win over Vista Grande and Casa Grande, Arizona would move South Point to 10 and 0. But let's begin with a squad in Tucson who's unbeaten in the state of Arizona, the Flowing Wells Caballeros. They'd be gunning for their ninth win in 10 games. Of course, Flowing Wells' only loss was in Palm Desert, California. Before tonight, that is still. All right, Mountain View had a chance to get its fifth win of the season and claim a region title and a spot in the postseason. And that was an interception by Michael Olgas for the Caballeros. And then a decent run back to put Flowing Wells in good field position. Mountain View would get the ball back and Sean Budijaj would be coming right at you. After the nice pickup, Aaron Logston is doing it and doing it and doing it well. That, folks, is a touchdown for Mountain View, but after that, Flowing Wells will find Mitchell Effing, who is wide open and Effing with the catch, and that's an Effing first down. And then Rashad Henderson will be rumbling his way into the end zone. It'd be tied up much of the first half for the Caballeros and Mountain Lions, but hey, in the end, Mountain View surges forward with a big victory. Final score, 42. 16. Buena High School made a trip from Cochise County in Sierra Vista to Tucson Southside as the Colts were hoping to finish their regular season with a respectable 6-4 record. Meanwhile, Sunnyside came out strong on senior night, trying to get back to 500 on the season and avoid a losing season. And off of the kickoff, Sebastian Olmos will find a weird bounce and he will get hit hard by Buena's number 17, who is not listed on the roster and early on check out Sunnyside's Dustin Archuleta with the nice gain and still on the same drive Sebastian Olmos on the reverse is making it happen captain and take a look at Olmos turning the corner and marching deep into Buena High School territory in the end Sunnyside pulls out the home victory 22 to 14 and win or lose props to Buena High School guard Matthew Giusino he was recently profiled in the Sierra Vista Herald Review, and his story is being spread all around the Cochise County area. Cochise County newspaper focused on how he's overcome type two or type one rather diabetes for nearly a decade and continues to excel as a standout in football. Justino has had to manage blood sugar levels while on the field and off, yet still, he's been able to lead Buena High School to a successful season. He is just a junior, so expect more from Matthew Justino next season as well. Hey, moving on from Sunnyside's victory over Buena on the south side to the far reaches of Pima County and Vail, Arizona. Let's send things over to Ari Alexander as Sienega hosted Ironwood Ridge. Yeah, Paul Sienega hoping to win its ninth and ten and improve their playoff positioning. However, Ironwood Ridge always comes to play against the Bobcats. Remember last year, took overtime for Sienega to edge out the Nighthawks and a win tonight would actually not only give Ironwood Ridge the 5A Southern title, but likely get them in the 5A playoffs. Senior night at Sienega, Bobcats leading 10 to seven just before half and I Ridge trying to score and they are going nowhere. Going to get stuffed by the Bobcats defense. Second half, same deal for Sienega. Check out Thomas Webb Jr. and company shutting down the run on fourth down and then they're gonna get the ball back on the Bobcats and Terrell Hayward at quarterback for Sienega. Hayward going to hand it off on the jet sweep to Geo Owens, who is gonna come right at us and then right away from us. A little cut back here and Owens is in the end zone. But final score, Ironwood Ridge comes back and wins that game 20 to 17. That has got to get them in the playoffs. And the band and cheer section keeping the energy up at Pueblo High. It would pay off for the start. First quarter, Ruben Rivera switched to quarterback. Normally plays running back. He's going for Bobby Jackson. Touchdown Pueblo. They're up 6-0. And Ruben Rivera, one of our two-time former players of the week, can do it on defense. Little spin and pick six there. Touchdown Pueblo as they take a 12-0 lead. But Amphi trying to get something going. Kevin Silva to Julian and Sinas makes the catch. And then he is going to take an absolute shot from two Pueblo Warriors. Now to the second quarter, third and five for Amphi. They're trying to get something going and boom! How did Ethan Ross survive that hit? Look at that, kid stayed up, but Pueblo goes on to beat Amphi. 
All right, Coach Brandon Sanders and Pueblo High School finished out the season winners of four of the last five games. Meanwhile, Tucson High School was also hoping to end its season on a positive note. The Badgers would host Trevor Brown High School from the Phoenix area. A victory for Tucson High will get the Badgers back to 500 on the season. And Coach Justin Argraves would rile up the troops. And Tucson High special teams will continue to set the tone. Into the second quarter we go. The Badgers already lead 38-0 and the camera's pulled a bit, but doesn't take a fool to see that this punt return is on mark. Francisco Sanchez, the 140-pound junior, feeling the need for speed. Just like that, the Badgers lead 38-0 in the second quarter and the defense continues strong. David Lopez will pick up the player from Trevor Brown and slam him down to the ground. How's that sound? Once Tucson High got the ball back, Gary Love will be showing nothing but love for the end zone. In slow mo, we go. For the opposing team, it's the end of the show. Tucson High would jump out to a 45-0 halftime lead and close out the season with a big victory. Final score, 69-0. And I'll say it prematurely, but congrats once again to Coach Jeff Skurin. 35 years of coaching, over 300 victories, 251 in high school, and multiple state titles and championship appearances. In addition to a bowl game victory while well, he was at Pima College. Skurin, of course, will be honored at the halftime of the 1 p.m. football game on Saturday at Pima College as well as the Aztecs play their last home football game perhaps ever. Remember, this is the final season of the football program. And of course, I just letting you know right now because uh, you know the game ended late, Catalina Foothills High School, so we're gonna get those highlights and everything for you after the break. But also after the break, more highlights, a special tribute to South Point assistant coach and U of A legend Jay Dobbins as he receives a major honor. More sports, more energy, more Friday football fever, and also honoring Jeff Skurin as well. And uh, those highlights at Catalina Foothills and Saguaro after the break. Equipment. Hey Jay, what are Saturdays for? Saturdays are for the bowl. What are Fridays for? Fridays are for Friday Night Lights with Polly Sikala. <laughs> yes, alongside my buddy Ari Alexander as well, we bring you some Friday Night Lights in the form of the Friday Football Fever. Thanks again to Arizona football great Jay Dobbins for everything he does for the community apart from helping coach at South Point and carrying the torch for U of A football. Jay Dobbins also put his life on the line as an undercover agent dedicated to protecting Tucson. And this afternoon, the Novo Home Loans Arizona Bowl honored Dobbins once again. This is the founder and chairman of the Novo Home Loans Arizona Bowl, Ali Farhang, presenting him the Arizona Strong Award. It has traditionally been awarded to recognize the hard work and dedication that enriches the community in sports, volunteering, and citizenship. Jay Dobbins gave a heartwarming speech on what it takes to be tough, bounce back from being shot while working in law enforcement, overcoming odds in football, standing up to bullies, and protecting and serving. I caught up with the all Pac-10 receiver who still carries that U of A torch very, very strong. Describe what it means for you to be honored for being such a community icon today. Uh, it's uh, humbling, it's flattering. Uh, I went to high school here, I went to college here, I've grown up here, this is my town, I love it, I embrace it, good, bad, anything, it doesn't matter. I love Tucson and I love representing us and I'm flattered to do so. And I, my friend, I'm honored to chat with you, Mr. Dobbins. And hey, get this beforehand, even actor Gerard Butler surprised Jay Dobbins this afternoon. And everyone in attendance at the Novo Home Loans Arizona Bowl luncheon with a special message. Hey, Southern Arizona. My name is Jerry Butler, and I'm a good friend of Jay Dobbins, who I've known for many years. And uh, a more stand-up guy I couldn't think of. He's been very instrumental in, in helping me prepare for my movie, Den of Thieves, and creating Big Nick Flanagan. And in that time, I've come to know somebody who is exceptionally loyal and generous and courageous. Hey, what a tribute to Dobbins. And of course, the team he helps coach South Point Catholic finish off the season unbeaten 10-0 after a 63-7 road victory in Casa Grande against Vista Grande High School. Meanwhile, we have one more game to report. Ari Alexander joins us again as he talks Desert View and Empire. Hey, Paul, both Empire Desert View fighting for bragging rights tonight, trying to end the season on a positive note as the Ravens, Jaguars, no shot at postseason play. However, Empire trying to get back to 500, and we have got the Raven with the crown. 27-21, Desert View in the lead, but Empire's defense going to get the stop. Former Tucson Roadrunners Player of the Week, Cody Pacheco. 
Knocks it down, and the Empire trying to get something going on offense. They're going to hand it off to fullback Isaiah Sierra, and Sierra is going to rumble up the middle. And then look at this. Ball pops out, gets it back. First down, Empire. The drive would stall, though, for the Ravens, and Sierra going to get stuffed here by Anthony Trujillo and Dimitri Acuna. But Empire would come back and score that late touchdown. The Ravens win 28-27. to On to Saguaro and Catalina Foothills, where Jeff Skurin coaching his final high school game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. Skurin talking his team up, and Catalina Foothills going to get it going early. Big run going to get pulled down by Saguaro inside the 50 here and then quarterback Joaquin home with the handoff and one yard score Catalina Foothills getting it going but Saguaro has been so good all year remember they have absolutely dominated much of their competition they beat Sabino they beat Canyon Del Oro and tonight it would be a lot of Saguaro. Isaiah Grigsby the quarterback for the Cougars would have a big game Joaquin home trying to do something for the, woo, who did that? Trying to do something for his Falcons, but a tip drill pick by Sewell. The Cougars would go on to win 21 to 14 in Jeff Skurin's last game as the Falcons head coach. Hey, and Ari, win or lose, you knew it'd still be Coach Jeff Skurin's night at Catalina Foothills High School. That was last season after his 300 career victory at all levels. He was carried off the field by his players. Combined number as a high school coach, professional coach, and college coach. And Skurin, he wasn't covered off, carried off the field tonight, though, but still lots of hugs. After a long-standing and winning era comes to an end, Jeff Skurin's high school career is over with. But hey, the proud Tucsona will continue to give back to the old Pueblo, even in retirement, no doubt. And uh, we caught up with them, unfortunately, since the game ended so late. We weren't able to get that into the show, but I promise you tomorrow, of course, uh, we will get you all those highlights, and, uh, and Ari Alexander will get you that soundbite as well. But now let's throw it back to him for the play of the week. Yeah, Paul, we're going to go back to Pueblo for our play of the week. Ruben Rivera normally plays linebacker, normally plays running back. Tonight he'd be a quarterback, and he would be doing this. Nice little interception here. Gets the spin, gets the score. Goes all the way to the house for Ruben Rivera. Pueblo goes on to finish their season strong as they dominate Amphi tonight. And Ruben Rivera, two-time Player of the Week winner. Won last year, won the year before. This time his senior year, and a nice play for Rivera. All right, well, that's it for tonight. Congratulations to Pueblo and Rivera, of course, for that victory. For Ari Alexander, I'm Paul Sicala. Have an awesome weekend.